welcome to our world news program. Today, we delve into the twists and turns of Hong Kong's residential property market. After a brief surge post-curb removal in February, home sales have taken a nosedive, plummeting over 50% in April and another 32% in May. The high inventory and soaring interest rates are the culprits here, slowing down the buying frenzy that had developers slashing prices by more than 20% to clear out stock. Analysts suggest this slowdown is inevitable, especially with the US delaying rate cuts. Next up, Hong Kong's strategic position as the world's leading offshore renminbi center could be a game-changer for China's trade and investment, particularly in Hungary. As Hungary emerges as a manufacturing hub for EVs and lithium batteries, Hong Kong's financial services could provide crucial support in yuan transactions, bolstering China's foreign investments in the region. Finally, we turn to Malaysia, where the scars of the 1969 race riots still linger. This dark chapter in Malaysian history continues to stifle open discussions, with wealth disparities between Malays and ethnic Chinese remaining stark. Despite the new economic policy aimed at restructuring the socio-economic landscape, the policy has failed to bridge the gap, leaving a lasting impact on Malaysia's multiracial fabric. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these stories. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's residential property market experienced a surge in activity following the government's removal of cooling measures in late February. However, high inventory levels and rising interest rates have tempered this enthusiasm, bringing transaction volumes and prices back to more typical levels. According to JLL, the initial burst of market activity was short-lived, with primary market transactions peaking at 4,141 units in March only to drop by over 50% to 1,880 units in April and further to 1,273 in May. This surge was largely driven by pent-up demand and developers offering significant discounts to clear inventory, which had swelled to around 20,000 units over the past two years. Despite these fluctuations, experts like Bugle Lao KFAI of Midland Realty believe the market is stabilizing rather than losing momentum. Secondary market transactions have also slowed, impacted by high mortgage rates and a price war in the primary market. Analysts suggest that the ongoing high mortgage rates and tightening credit conditions will likely lead to a continued decline in transaction volumes. South China Morning Post, Financial Secretary Paul Chan Emopa's recent promotion of Hong Kong at a San Francisco luncheon highlighted the city's strengths as a financial hub, which he believes will spur growth and benefit national initiatives like the Greater Bay Area Integration and the Belt and Road Initiative. Chan's optimism is shared by business leaders who see Hong Kong playing a key role in fostering trade and investment, particularly in regions like Hungary, where Chinese investments in EV manufacturing are on the rise. Hong Kong's status as the largest offshore renminbi hub and its robust professional services are seen as critical assets in supporting these international ventures. The need for expanded direct flight services to Europe and North America was also emphasized to enhance connectivity and reduce costs. Meanwhile, vigilance against scams remains crucial, as illustrated by a personal account of a fraudulent car repair experience, underscoring the importance of consumer awareness and regulatory oversight. Additionally, concerns were raised about the pharmaceutical industry's influence over drug approvals in Canada, calling for a greater focus on consumer safety over corporate profits. South China Morning Post Tourists wander through the Kampong Baru district in Kuala Lumpur, unaware of its grim history as the site of Malaysia's worst race riots on May 13, 1969. The violence, sparked by political infighting between Malay and Malaysian Chinese parties over a contentious election, resulted in 196 deaths in Kuala Lumpur alone, though unofficial sources suggest the toll was much higher. The riots began at the house of Harun Idris, the then chief minister of Selangor, where a crowd clashed with Chinese party supporters during a victory parade in a Malay-majority village, igniting widespread violence. Despite the modern skyline of Kuala Lumpur, the deep-seated resentment from the riots persists, especially due to the economic disparities between Malays and ethnic Chinese. The new economic policy of 1971 aimed to address these disparities but has largely failed, with ethnic Chinese still dominating the wealthiest ranks in Malaysia. This has led to enduring tensions, exacerbated by Malay nationalism and political rhetoric warning of a repeat of the 1969 violence if Malay political dominance is threatened. Despite this, Malaysia has maintained a strong relationship with China, both economically and culturally, since formalizing ties in 1974. However, anti-Chinese sentiment remains a political tool, with politicians like former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin accusing current leadership of compromising national sovereignty to China. Social media and misinformation further fuel these tensions, while economic dependence on China continues to grow. South China Morning Post 
Chinese scientists have achieved a breakthrough in quantum physics by demonstrating that entanglement can be used as a form of fuel for quantum engines. Researchers from the Chinese Academy of Sciences Innovation Academy of Precision Measurement Science and Technology have shown that a pair of entangled photons can remain connected regardless of distance, allowing for a new kind of energy conversion. Unlike traditional engines, quantum engines use lasers to transition particles between quantum states, converting light into kinetic energy. The study, published in Physical Review Letters, reveals that higher degrees of entanglement in ions lead to greater mechanical efficiency in these engines. This could potentially lead to energy conversion efficiencies surpassing 25%, making it feasible to power large-scale quantum computers and circuits. The team used ultra-cold 40 Ca plus ions in an ion trap, transitioning them to highly entangled states through precise laser adjustments. Despite the mysterious nature of quantum entanglement, the study confirms its role as a fuel for quantum engines. This finding opens new avenues for developing microenergy devices like quantum motors and batteries, which could revolutionize energy storage and usage in quantum computing. The next challenge lies in increasing the number of working materials without compromising the fidelity of the entangled state, thereby enhancing the output and efficiency of quantum engines. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.